When it comes to DIYs, the most important thing is it's fun, you have a useful DIY, and it's successful. Well, today we're gonna keep it simple. We're building some hexagonal coasters. Great focal point on any table, and they're fun to make. I'm gonna take you through all the steps and show you how easy it is to do. So where do you start off with? Well, we need some timber. I've got a piece here, it's a 1.8. It's 12 mil by 94 wide. So it's just big enough to accommodate my hexagon shapes. When it comes to the tools, now there's a number of different ways to do this. You can mark each hexagon shape, trace it all out onto your timber, and then cut it out with a jigsaw, with a rotary saw, you can even use a hand saw. However, you should know me by now, I'm far too lazy for that. The miter saw is the way to go. You can set that to 30 degrees. That way, when you cut each facet, you'll see that you get a perfect angle, a perfect length, a perfect shape every single time. So having a look at a hexagon, well, you've basically got 120 degrees in those opening flats there, and then there's a 30 degree from this side and 60 degrees from the bottom. The first thing I'm gonna do is to mark up my timber at the right points to ensure I have an accurate cut, an accurate facet angle every single time. So, take your piece of timber. Allow for a little bit of an off cut. I'm gonna use this piece as a jig a little bit later on. You'll see that in a minute. So I'm gonna give myself, oh, around about a 200 long. That's gonna be my off cut. Now I'm gonna mark the center of my timber. Now this is the critical part. You wanna make sure that your measurements are as accurate as possible. So measure the width and then just mark the center. I'm on 92 here, so that's gonna give me 46. And then just give yourself a horizontal line there. Okay, now that's our key point. So we're gonna pop that into our mitre saw. I've already set it to 30 degrees. In goes the timber, safety glasses are on. Remember our first cut is gonna be our off cut piece, which I'm gonna use as a jig a little bit later on. Okay, we'll put that aside. Okay, so now this is the important cut. We've gotta make sure our cut goes through that little intersecting line in the middle there. Okay, so that's our key point there, is that marking point where that cut line goes through that line and the distance from there to that outer edge. That's our first corner of our hexagon shape. So, pop it on the table, take your measuring device, measure from the corner to that cut line. And I get a distance of 53.5 millimeters. So now that I've got that measurement of 53.5, I need to take that, flip this piece of timber over, and transfer that measurement onto that bottom edge, because that's gonna show me the point of the next cutting point. Once we've done this, that's the last measurement that we have to do, our jig is gonna come into play. Take it now back to my saw. I'm gonna line it up, and I'm gonna cut through on that 53.5 position point. That's our little piece left. And straight away, I can see I've offset there, so I'm gonna have to keep cut all the way up to my measurement point. As you cut, you can keep moving it up and down until you get to your marking point. Right, once you've finished that second cut, don't lift your piece of timber up, because you need to mark the bed of the mitre saw. So take your pencil, and then just run a little sight line there. And now, as we turn it around, we know we're gonna slide it up to that line and make our next cut. We're basically using that line as our reference to make sure that every cut piece is the same size. Alternatively, you can slide your piece of timber up to the line, or remember that scrap piece we made earlier? You can use that as a jig and as a stopper. Slide that up, mark it up onto the line that you just marked, and then clamp that into position. So all you need to do now is start cutting each one of the facets. It's really simple to do. You've got your first piece which was cut. All you're gonna do now is turn that to its next facet and slide it up, butting up against the jig that you've set up. Again, turn it, that one's already been cut. Turn it again, and you've got your next piece. That's it, that's the first hexagon piece complete. All we need to do now is start making some more. Again, we've got our whole jig set up, so let's go back to our original piece. Take that cut edge, push it right up against our jig. Hold it down, and that's our next piece. Rotate that, slide it back in, butt it up to the jig, and you get another perfect hexagon. Every side 
is equal length, it looks symmetrical, it's accurate. Let's carry on and make some more. Okay, so that's the last cut, and you can see now all that little bit of effort I put to set up that jig, get the measurements right, really did pay off. We cut all six of those in literally no time at all. What we need to do now is just to sand down the edges, sand down the surface, get it nice and smooth and neat, and then we can stain it up or we can seal it. It's entirely up to you. I think with this particular one, we'll sand it down and actually seal it with a clear sealer so that we keep that natural look of the pine. Now, this particular pine that I'm using, it's a soft pine, so I'm gonna use my random orbital sander with a 180 grit. It's quite a smooth grit, perfect for something like a coaster. Right, I sanded all those down. I'm now gonna seal them with some sealer. I've got some paint in a can, so much easier. No cleanup, it dries quickly, it's easy to apply. What's nice about this clear sealer is it still keeps that clear look and it stops that pine from going too yellow. So I really like this stuff. Always make use of a scrap board. That way you don't have to worry about the overspray or you can use some newspaper. Remember when using paint in a can or spray paint, always in a well ventilated area. You'll see I'm using a handle on my spray gun. Little attachment goes onto the spray gun. It makes spray painting so much easier. I love this tool and it's the go-to every single time I actually use some spray paints. Okay, so once that's dry, flip it over and seal the underside. And then that's it for this DIY. It's complete. We've got our squares, any color, any size, but basically it's entirely up to you. The most important thing is you use the right tool for the job. Maybe it was a bit of an overkill using a mitre saw. We can do it with the old fashioned way, cut it by hand if we wanted to. But this made life so much easier. So if you've got a mitre saw, go make yourself some hexagonal coasters. It's as easy as that. If you don't have a mitre saw, visit the builder's website. Be sure to check out the website. There's a whole load of product reviews, DIYs on the YouTube channel. There's even how-tos for you to be inspired to get to builders and get it done.